Dr. Carter, they're here. The lab door shook violently, the Drex pounding against it. Dr. Emily Carter glanced at her mentor, Dr. William Thompson, who lay on the floor, blood pooling around him. His voice was faint, but his words were urgent. Microorganisms' deep sea vents our only hope. Emily's mind raced. The Drex were unstoppable, their regenerative abilities rendering them invincible. But if what Dr. Thompson suggested was true, there might be a way to neutralize them. She couldn't afford to hesitate. She had to get the information and get out. Emily, you need to go, Thompson whispered, gripping her hand weakly. Find those microorganisms. Save us all. The door splintered, and Emily's resolve hardened. She nodded, squeezing his hand one last time before turning to her team. We need to leave. Now. She ordered, her voice firm despite the fear gnawing at her insides. Her team Sarah, a brilliant chemist, Mark, a tough ex-marine, and David, a skilled engineer rallied around her. They grabbed their gear and bolted towards the emergency exit. The lab shuddered as the Drex broke through, their eerie, alien forms filling the space behind them. The emergency tunnel was dark and cramped, but it offered a momentary reprieve from the chaos. Emily led the way, her mind racing with possibilities. The deep sea vents were their only chance, but getting there would be a monumental task. As they emerged into the night, the city was a war zone. Buildings were ablaze, and the streets were filled with the sounds of distant gunfire and screams. Emily's heart clenched at the thought of her daughter, Lily, who was staying with friends on the other side of the city. Emily, what's the plan? Mark's voice cut through her thoughts. We head to the coast, Emily replied, her voice steady. We need to find those microorganisms. They're our only hope against the Drex. They moved through the city, sticking to the shadows to avoid Drex patrols. The journey was perilous, and Emily's thoughts kept drifting to Lily. She needed to know if her daughter was safe. They reached a temporary shelter where survivors had gathered. Emily found a working radio and managed to contact the group watching over Lily. Relief washed over her as she heard her daughter's voice, but the relief was short-lived. Mom, there are drecks everywhere. Lily's voice was filled with terror. We're hiding, but they're getting closer. Emily's heart pounded. Stay hidden, Lily. I'm coming for you. Emily, we can't deviate from the plan, Sarah said, her voice tinged with worry. We need to get to those microorganisms. I know, Emily said, torn between her duty and her love for her daughter. But I can't leave her. We'll rescue Lily and then head to the coast. They moved quickly, navigating the dangerous streets. When they reached Lily's location, Emily felt a surge of emotion seeing her daughter's frightened face. She hugged Lily tightly, promising they would be safe. The reunion was brief. The Drex were closing in. With Lily in tow, they made their way to the coast, finding a small boat they could use to reach the deep sea vents. As they sailed into the darkness, Emily's mind was a whirlwind of fear and hope. The weight of their mission pressed heavily on her, but she knew they had no choice. Dr. Emily Carter guided her team through the rubble-strewn streets, her eyes constantly scanning for signs of Drex patrols. The once bustling city lay in ruins, now a battlefield. Her heart pounded as they moved quickly, every shadow a potential threat. Beside her, her daughter Lily clutched a worn-out teddy bear, a stark reminder of the innocence they were fighting to protect. The group reached a makeshift safe house. Inside, Emily reviewed the hastily assembled plan with her team. We need to get to the coast and secure a submarine, she said pointing to the map spread across the table. The deep sea vents are our only hope. The team nodded, determination etched on their faces. Emily's second in command, a burly engineer named Jake, spoke up. We have to move fast. The Drex are getting closer every day. With supplies packed, they ventured out again. The city was eerily silent, the only sounds their footsteps and the occasional distant explosion. As they approached the coast, the landscape shifted to one of desolation. Buildings crumbled, 
and the air smelled of smoke and despair. Reaching the coastal town, they found a submarine dock surprisingly intact. Jake worked quickly to get it operational while Emily kept watch. The air was thick with tension. Every minute felt like an hour. Subs ready, Jake finally called out. The team piled in and the submarine descended into the depths, the water swallowing them in silence. Emily took a deep breath, trying to calm her nerves. This was their best chance, perhaps their only one. Halfway to their destination, the sonar picked up an approaching Drek scout vessel. Emily's heart sank. We can't let them find us, she whispered, more to herself than anyone else. Jake maneuvered the submarine with skill, evading the Drex vessel in a tense underwater chase. The scout ship was relentless, matching their every move. The sub's hull creaked under the pressure, a constant reminder of their precarious situation. We need to lure them away, Jake suggested. Emily nodded, her mind racing. She grabbed the communication device and sent a signal, diverting the Drex ship's attention. It worked, but the submarine sustained damage in the process. Water seeped in and alarms blared. Patch it up, Emily ordered. The team worked frantically, sealing the breach. Minutes felt like hours, but they managed to stabilize the vessel. Finally, they reached the deep sea vents. The crew wasted no time collecting samples of the unique microorganisms. Emily watched the glowing vents in awe, realizing the potential of these tiny life forms to save humanity. With samples secured, they began the journey back, but the tension remained high. The damaged submarine made for a slow and perilous return. Emily kept her eyes on the sonar, hoping to avoid another encounter with the Drex. When they surfaced, the coastal town was in chaos. Drex patrols were everywhere. Emily's heart raced as they quietly docked and slipped into the shadows, making their way back to the lab. The journey felt endless, every corner a potential ambush. The team reached the deep sea vents with a mix of relief and urgency. The submarine's lights cut through the dark waters, illuminating the towering vents spewing mineral-rich plumes. Emily's hands shook as she operated the sampling equipment, each second feeling like a lifetime. Got it, she said, securing the container of microorganisms. We need to get back to the lab, now. The return journey was fraught with tension. The submarine's damaged hull creaked ominously, and everyone remained silent, eyes darting to the pressure gauges. As they surfaced, the sight of Drek scout ships patrolling the coast sent a shiver down their spines. They had to move quickly. Back at the lab, chaos reigned. The defences were barely holding, and the Drex were relentless. Emily sprinted to her workstation, the container clutched tightly in her hands. She could hear the sounds of battle echoing through the halls. We're running out of time, Emily, shouted Jake, a resistance fighter, as he fired his weapon down the corridor. I know, just keep them off me, she replied, her voice steady despite the fear gnawing at her insides. She began the delicate process of bioengineering the delivery system. Her mind laser-focused on the task. The lab's equipment hummed and beeped, a stark contrast to the chaos outside. Minutes felt like hours. Emily's fingers flew over the controls, mixing the microorganisms with a viral vector that could disperse through the air. The first test on a captured Drex was promising its regenerative abilities faltered, wounds failing to heal. It's working, she whispered, a mixture of relief and triumph in her voice. She turned to the others. We need to produce more and release it throughout the lab. As they worked, the sounds of battle grew closer. The Drex were breaking through. The lab's power flickered and died, plunging them into darkness. Emily grabbed a flashlight, her determination unwavering. Manual deployment it is, she muttered leading the team through the dimly lit corridors. They reached the central ventilation system and began releasing the bioengineered microorganisms. The air filled with a faint metallic scent as the system hummed back to life. A massive explosion rocked the lab and Emily knew the outer defenses had fallen. The Drex poured in, their snarls echoing off the walls. 
She watched as the first wave of aliens staggered, their wounds remaining open, confusion replacing their usual arrogance. Keep pushing. We're almost there. Emily yelled, her voice cutting through the noise. Her daughter, Anna, stood by her side, eyes wide but resolute. They moved through the lab, releasing the microorganisms in key areas. Suddenly, General Zarox appeared, his massive form blocking their path. He sneered, confident in his immortality. You think this will stop us? He growled. Emily stepped forward, a steely glint in her eye. It already has. As if on cue, Xarox staggered, clutching his side where a wound failed to close. His expression shifted from contempt to shock. The Drex leader fell to his knees, his regenerative power stripped away. The remaining Drex faltered, their assault losing momentum. Resistance fighters surged forward, pushing the aliens back. Emily watched as Zarok struggled to stand, finally understanding the gravity of their defeat. Emily and Anna moved to the lab's control center, activating the final sequence to ensure global distribution of the microorganisms. The Drex retreat was chaotic, their invincibility shattered. As the battle subsided, Emily hugged Anna tightly. We did it, she whispered, tears of relief streaming down her face. The lab was a mess, but they had won. Humanity had triumphed through ingenuity and determination, proving once again that the human spirit was unbreakable. Emily's fingers trembled as she tightened the final bolt on the manual delivery system. The sounds of battle outside the lab were getting closer too close. She glanced at her daughter, Lily, who was helping distribute the microorganisms into the air vents. Almost there, sweetheart, Emily said, forcing a reassuring smile. The lab door buckled under another blow. Resistance fighters fired relentlessly, trying to hold off the Drex, but the aliens were relentless. General Zarox himself led the charge, his voice booming through the din. Surrender now, humans, and your deaths will be swift. Emily ignored the taunts, focusing on her task. She flipped a switch, and the system hummed to life. Cool air began circulating, carrying the microorganisms through the lab. It's working, Lily exclaimed, hope shining in her eyes. The door burst open, and Drex soldiers flooded the room. Protect Dr. Carter, shouted Sergeant Michaels, the resistance leader. He and his men formed a human shield around Emily and Lily, firing at the advancing Drex. Bullets and energy blasts flew in every direction, the lab a chaotic battlefield. Emily ducked behind a console, pulling Lily with her. She watched in horror as the Drex regenerated almost instantly from their wounds. Come on, come on, she muttered willing the microorganisms to work faster. Suddenly, one of the Drex stumbled, its skin bubbling where it had been shot. Then another fell, convulsing. The microorganisms were taking effect, stripping away the Drex's regenerative abilities. A cheer went up from the resistance fighters as they pressed their advantage. General Zarox roared in fury, pushing through his faltering troops. His eyes locked onto Emily. This is your doing. He lunged at her, but Sergeant Michaels tackled him, both of them crashing to the floor in a violent struggle. Emily rushed to help, but Lily grabbed her arm. Mom, you can't fight him. You need to stay safe and make sure this works. Tears stung Emily's eyes as she nodded, squeezing Lily's hand. You're right. Let's get to the control room. They sprinted down a corridor, dodging debris, and stray bullets. Behind them, Michaels was thrown against a wall by Xarox, who then charged after them. There's nowhere to hide, Dr. Carter. Emily and Lily reached the control room, slamming the door shut and barricading it. Emily activated the lab's full ventilation system, ensuring the microorganisms spread throughout the building. This has to work, she said, her voice shaking. The door shook under Sarok's assault. Emily grabbed a metal rod, ready to defend her daughter. Stay behind me, Lily. The door finally gave way, and Zarok stormed in. His eyes were wild with rage, but his movements were slower, less coordinated. You can't stop us. 
he growled, staggering. Emily stood her ground. You're wrong. Humanity will always find a way. Xarox lunged at her, but his strength failed. He collapsed at her feet, gasping for breath. Emily looked down at him, pity mixing with her triumph. It's over. Outside, the sounds of battle died down as the Drex fell one by one. The resistance fighters emerged victorious, rallying around Emily and Lily. We did it, Lily whispered, hugging her mother tightly. Emily looked around at the lab, now eerily silent. We survived, she said softly, tears of relief streaming down her face.